What's up everyone? We got the brand new 99 overall cards in the game. 30 brand new 99 overall cards, all for free. I'm gonna show you how to get all of them quick and easy. They did change a couple of missions and how you get these cards, but let's go through it. I don't wanna waste your time. I'll hop right into something that you guys all hate and just get it out of the way so that we can go through the rest of the fun stuff and the free stuff, the packs. All right, um, the packs in the shop. Now, the first one, though, for everybody, it's fun because it's free. And by now, you've probably seen more coverage from Livy Dunn about Paul Skeens' debut for the Pirates than you have from MLB. But either way, Paul Skeens, you get a free 90 overall spring breakout card. Guys, this card will play for a couple games because you got to remember, not everyone who's playing the game, unless you haven't put your controller down, since it came out, or you're one of those people who plays all weekend once the weekend is available to you. Uh, none of those guys have these 99 overall hitters in their lineup yet. If they do, they don't have an entire lineup of 99s. You'll run into a couple of people like that, but this card will play for a couple of days until people catch up on Team Affinity. So go grab your Paul Skeens free 99, sorry, 90 overall. And he's still got outlier on the fastball, five pitch mix. Like I said, it'll be fine for a couple of games. The next one, Paul Skeen's 99 chase pack reward. All right. Um, I'm going to guess he's probably going for, it's not going to show here, but like 460, probably 460,000 stubs. All right. He's going to be expensive if you want to try your luck at pulling 50, a 50 bundle and getting him in the chase pack. Go for it. Um, probably the best pitcher in the game right now. All right, five pitches. Same, same as the 90 overall outlier, but all the stats, tremendous. I would have thought he had below 80 blocks per nine, but that's not true. 83, and then 82 control to complement it. Like I said, best he's got to be the best pitcher in the game as of right now. DeGrom still plays well. Uh, Andy Pettit probably fights with Skeens for number one in the game right now. Um, but let's go over the rest of the cards because there are some more pitchers we need to go over. And you might disagree with me about Skeens being the best. And you might pick this other, not really new legend, because he hasn't been in the game the last two years, but he was in the game in MLB 21. But we'll go over the new legend that they brought back. All right. Season drops. Now, I like this one a lot. Tariq Skubal, tremendous in real life. Off to a great start this season. He was good last year. And he got this 99 overall season one drop. Season award series. Okay, he always plays well in this game. There's obviously some pitchers who don't translate well from real life to this game. Um, some really good pitchers in real life. Sandy Alcantara, Spencer Strider, uh, Ryan Helsley, who's the next one. So if you get the rare round, you're going to be choosing Tariq Skubal. All right, I'm telling you that. Don't choose Ryan Helsley. He just doesn't, uh, he just doesn't play well in the game. I don't think he does. He only has three pitches. Yes, he is outlier, but if you're putting him right next to Tariq Skubal or Stamina, he's a starting pitcher. Yeah, the, the choice is easy here if you get the right around. You're going with Tariq or Tarek. Some people say these names differently. I'm just going to say both of them so I can cover my ass. A little CYA action there. And then if you want to try, you know, if you don't want Christian Walker or you don't want Wenzel Perez and you don't want Brian Ramos, um, don't buy the pack because your chances of getting one of these two guys is low. And if you save your stubs, you can probably just buy Tariq outright from the market. Um, I think he's the only one worth getting out of this pack entirely. Captains, of course, this captain pack is still here. Kershaw, 2000s captain, you get the switch in captain. There's also the free, I didn't realize this was free. I thought you had to buy this one, okay, cool. So they gave us another free captain pack. Um, so that's any captain that's dropped already. Uh, besides the captains in this pack, and then the Derek Jeter captain from the storyline, and I believe the Negro League captain. So you get any other captain, team captain, pitching and hitting, I think you can just get to choose one pack. So hitter captain or a pitching captain. All right, then we got the home stretch. Very interesting choice here. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments, because I didn't like the fact that they double dipped with Trevor Story by putting him in the XP path on the season XP path but then also putting him in this pack as a 99 overall. So on the XP path, I believe it's an 89 overall, and the attributes are just really weird looking on that one. Here, it's a lot more balanced. He's one of those favoritism cards, like if you've done well with him before, you typically favored him, 
and uh, you continue to do well with him. If you don't like him or you, you feel like he's kind of borderline, I I go back and forth with it. If there's not other good shortstops, then Trevor Story plays well. Usually there are other good sh- shortstops, and you know we got J-Roll now. Um, Brian Roberts is one of the team affinity drops. Another switch hitting shortstop. There's some good shortstops in the game right now. Honus Wagner is one of them too. Uh, Hannes Wagner, we'll go over that card soon. But a lot of people, like I said, they like Trevor Story's stance, his swing, and uh, he'll play. But I don't think it's worth getting this pack for, unless you want uh, Kodai Senga. Because I think Kodai plays very well. He's got that nasty fork ball that drops off massively from his almost outlier fastball. It's not outlier, and it does only say 98 miles per hour up there. I feel like it just comes in faster when you're actually facing him. Goose Gossage. So Goose is the headliner, no, headliner? Yes, headliner, 17. So by my estimates, we'll probably be at pack, probably around 60 to 70 by like late August. But we're already at headliner 17, and he's got uh, max K per nine, 110 hits per nine, pitching clutch 114, the walks per nine on Goose Gossage at 95 and 86 control. Very good. So this card is going to be highly sought after. His market price will be high since he's a headliner pack, not easily attainable. You got the fastball slurve sinker changeup. That's what we normally see from Goose. Um, what did that say in the market? He's going for 78,000 right now. All right, so not terrible. If you guys, you should take a look at this yourself. The vault pack, it's one of these older cards. I shouldn't say older, but one of these more recent drops. You know, the, um, oh, Randy's in there. He was a season, he was a, what do you call it? Ranked reward. But then you got, you know, Matt Chapman, Dustin May, Nico Goodrum, whose prices will go down now because this vault pack is available in every single team affinity program as of right now. All right, this drop today. Team affinity season one, chapter three. So it is chapter three. I misspoke on chapter four. We'll start with the AL East, but before I do that, go to the end of the program. You get the vault pack right here. There it is. All right, you're guaranteed a diamond. You are guaranteed a diamond. You choose two of five diamonds. So all of these guys, their prices will plummet in the market. So if you thought you were going to sell them for more um, and you saved up a a bunch of them, you're probably not going to sell them for that much. Um, I would sell them right now if you want it for people who want to buy them immediately. But otherwise, you're going to get them for free by just playing Team Affinity. And we'll go through how to get this team affinity done. It's going to be the same for every division. Except we get the showdown. And I believe the conquest, like last chapter, will cover the entire team affinity instead of doing like East Conquest, Central Conquest, and West Conquest. Vouchers. You can earn vouchers various ways. You get them in many seasons. I think you get them for a showdown as well. And you can spend your vouchers however which way you want. So you should be able to get XP from just completing the showdown towards the, you know, team affinity. And then you can get vouchers from it that you can spend on any division. So if you want a particular division done faster to get more legends from them, more cards from them, then you can spend your vouchers on whatever division you want, I believe. You got the moments, you got the, there's one moment for the AL East. So I guess that's one moment for each division. Um, you got the single player missions. Those are usually the same every time. Multiplayer. And what I noticed, all right, so this is the difference from last season, last chapter, I should say, sorry. Um, they broke up play versus CPU and play versus conquest. So you would have to hop into a conquest map to get these two divisions, sorry, these two missions done. Hop into mini seasons to get these two missions done. Then you got to hop into two games against, the, or sorry, you know, get two missions done in the play versus CPU, which I think it's really weird that they broke it up like that. You're just discouraging. So, you know, most people will just play against CPU at like a high elevation field, Costco, uh, course field, stuff like that. And then you can get it done in probably two games. Okay. Now you got to hop into mini seasons for people who don't want to play mini seasons. This sucks because you have to start in mini seasons, get those missions done. And then basically If you don't want to finish out mini seasons, which I can't blame you for not wanting to do so, you just leave it alone and then you don't really progress anymore on that program, um, except for those two missions. Conquest, same thing. A lot of people don't want to finish out a conquest map. So I think it's really weird that they broke out the missions like this. Uh, Not good. All right, but 
Is it worth it when we get the vault pack for each division? I think so. I mean, I already play Conquest and Mini Seasons and CPU for these missions specifically, but you know, for people who don't want to do that, that's not really a good change. Um, but we got the extreme moment. Last time it wasn't too hard, but this time, you know, but we'll see. But I think it's good they have these extreme moments for 10,000 XP for the program. Very good. Let's take a look at some of the cards. Brian Roberts, like I mentioned. Switch hitting, we've seen him a couple of times over the recent years. Very, very good, unless you don't like his stance or swing. Sometimes it's tricky for people, but switch hitting shortstop, great fielding. Don't let the pop fool you. He can hit home runs. All right. Wade Box, same thing. Don't let the pop fool you. 85 and 78 power, but he's always got max vision. On this one, he's got 115 vision, max clutch, max contact. Fielding looks pretty good too at third base for a Wade Box card. All right. I like his swing. Some people don't like the little bat waggle and hunch of a thing. I think he's got a really quick swing. Uh, DJ LeMayhew, typically a card I stay away from just because I haven't figured him out yet. And um, otherwise, diamond defense, vision looks good. Clutch is maxed out. Brad Miller, dude. I'm very excited for this card. I love a good Brad Miller card. This is the best Brad Miller card we've had in probably four years. I don't know if I've ever seen a 99 overall Brad Miller. Uh, there was a... Philly's like top now one he had in 2021. There was one from maybe two years ago. They had like a 95 overall. This might be the first 99 overall Brad Miller. Plays every position except for catcher, pitcher, right? And he's a primary shortstop. Fielding's a little iffy. So maybe you play him at first base, third base, keep him away from the middle infield. And um, if you're pinch hitting him, you know, maybe for an outfielder or something, that works too. But 109, contact, 102, 125, 100, pop. And I think he's got a buttery, smooth swing. So lefties, righties, doesn't matter to me. I think he's going to play very well. 108, clutch, everything else, you know, pretty okay. But I love Brad Miller. So I'll be trying that one out. Tom Hankey, God, I'm not even going to go over that one. <laughs> he's got uh, he's got the outlier one, forkball slider. Might be good. Might be like, a, um, you know, the drop-off from the fastball to the fork ball is usually good enough. I would put him in the same ballpark as like Rob Dibble and, um, you know, maybe Lee Smith with that drop off with the splitter fork ball, you know, it'll be all right, but it's a uh, Tom Hanky. AL central Lucas Giolito. This is going to be a four pitch mix and this is going to be batting practice. In my opinion, I don't think he's going to play well. He doesn't have any quirks. There's his attributes kind of average walks per nine is good, but, I don't know. Cliff Lee. Um, some people think he's BP. Some people really struggle to hit him. I'm pretty back and forth on him. I always give him a try. Sometimes Cliff Lee, when he gets a card in this game, like I said, it's either BP or he carves people up. He jams people up. He also dots at the same time. And he's got 113 walks per nine with 96 control. That's just, that's beautiful. And the quirks, he's got two of them. Uh, the pitch mix is always solid. I think this one will do well. So I think he will be in people's rotations. I think we got another good Cliff Lee, which is always good for the game, in my opinion. And then we also got another Alan Trammell. I'm going to skip over this one, too. Um, you know, the pop's always an issue with him. His stance is always an issue. Unless they fixed his swing, his even his stance, even if his swing is good, the stance alone kind of turns people away from him. Whit Merrifield. I like this one a lot. It's a Royals Whit Merrifield. All right, he's currently on Philadelphia, but this Whit Merrifield, um, if you play with BR at all, you know, you probably use his live series. It's actually not that bad. So that makes me think that this card will be pretty decent too. 77 power against righties, 92 against lefties. I like his swing. He plays the field well enough, 90 fielding at second base, and then he's got a secondary position of first, third, left, center, and right. All right, so the only one he's missing is... Sorry, you can play all of them except for catcher and pitcher, right? Shortstop. Can't play shortstop. Uh, 84 speed. I like this card. Max clutch. 1 and 2 vision. I think it'll be good. I kind of want to try him and Brad Miller out on the same squad just to get some new new faces in there. All right, Harmon Killebrew is not a new face, uh, but the card looks very good. Usually his vision is lower, I believe. All right, but his discipline's always maxed out. His power is usually maxed out. It's at 117 from the right side, max on the left. Contact's good enough for a Harmon Killer, bro. Let's go to the AL West. Now, this one, I know the AL NL West is going to be good. So when we get there, stick around for that one. Jeff Bagwell, 
I don't care about him. He's been in the game for so long and he's been so bad. They would have to massively change his swing. His stance is hunched over. You know, good for you if you like Jeff Bagwell. He's out there. Jim Edmonds, I've always struggled with Jim. Um, he's got, you know, really weak stats against the lefties. 88 and 86. You could pinch hit him from the right, you know, against righties. But he's got a lot of quirks. Blake Trinan. Another 99 Blake Trinan is back. I think the last time we had a 99 Blake Trinan was either MLB 22 or 21. And everybody used him. Everybody used him for a reason. He's tremendous. Outlier sinker. One of the best pitches in the game right next to outlier slider in my opinion. But he's got a slider. And then he's got a four seam and a cutter. Great pitch mix. Something about him and his delivery. It just really, he's really hard to pick up. Everything breaks late from him. And he's got 125 hits per nine. 125 clutch. 97 walks per nine is great on a Blake Trining car with 91 control. This will be one of the best, probably the best bullpen arm in the game um, besides Goose. Edgar Martinez, another one. I haven't figured out if I really like him or not. He has tremendous balanced hitting stats here with power. 119 contact and 125 contact. And then 100 and 120 pop. Max clutch, 110 vision. He will be just fine at the plate. Maybe you put him at DH, he can play first base too. But other than that, he's got terrible fielding. I would avoid putting him at third base. And uh, like I said, one of those guys, I think, you know, oh, look, he's got a lot of quirks too. I think, I think I'm going to try him out. Before, I haven't had success with him before. Um, you know, maybe it's because I didn't know how to use him. I, I don't know. But he, I think he'll be all right. I think you can check him out. Ian Kinsler, this card's kind of abysmal among, uh, among 99 cards. Don't you think? I don't know. Tell me what you guys think of this Ian Kinsler because I think it's a pretty bad card. Um, if you're going to put an Ian Kinsler card in the game, either he's either, either going to have a lot of contact or something about him that just makes him crazy. Like really good speed, which he's got 87 speed and 84 fielding or 84 steel. He's got 91 fielding at second base. I can't imagine with what we got now with like Nico Goodrum, um, Eduardo Escobar is the NL West pack. And, you know, he's going to be able to play second base. Some of the other free cards that can play second base, Brian Reynolds. Um, I don't think a lot of people are going to be using Ian Kinsler except for, you know, Rangers fans and, and theme teams. But uh, yeah, that card, I wish it was a little bit better. They kind of did Ian wrong there. NL East. I was uh, kind of disappointed when I saw this on social media because this guy is still here. Uh, Mike Schmidt, he's going to have 105 and 125 con or power with him. That's probably the best thing about him other than his amazing fielding. Otherwise, he is just so hard to hit with. Like against righties, um, obviously the contact alone against righties sucks. His vision sucks. And his swing is the probably the worst in the game other than last year's Mark McGuire. A lot of quirks, but just not worth it. And one of the best third basemen to ever do it, along with you know Brooks Robinson, but... Uh, he's not going to play well, I don't think, unless they massively change his swing. But even so, the 85 contact against righties is not that great. All right, we got Andre Dawson. Um, we've seen a couple of his cards in the previous years. He's gotten some good ones. This one's kind of lackluster. So this whole division so far doesn't look great. Let's see if he has quirks, though. He doesn't. Contact's okay. Power's not great. Um, fielding's good. All right, the fielding's pretty good, though. So if you like him, he'll be fine. I love Gary Carter's swing. I've always been a big Gary Carter fan once I found out how good his swing was. Um, but again, this card seems a little lackluster for a 99 Gary Carter. Really wish he had more power. I really wish he had more contact, to be honest, too. 93 and 101 is not doing it for me. Now that the pitching is getting better, he might not play well on higher difficulties. But like I said, he's got a good swing. I'll still probably try him out behind the dish. Primary catcher, but he's also got secondary first, third, left, and right field. That's the most secondaries I've ever seen for a Gary Carter card. I don't think I've ever seen him in the outfield before, but he's got 90 fielding, so that's good. 93 arm, 87 accuracy, 83 reaction, and 92 block. He's already a good catcher alone. Catcher pop time is going to help you with stealing bags, throwing people out, I mean. Um, and yeah, 51 speed. I'm still going to try him out just because his fielding looks pretty cool. Um, and we'll see if his swing still plays well. Sandy Alcantara, we talked about him, doesn't translate well to the game. I think it's easy, he's easy to see, easy to pick up on, but he's got the pitch mix. Um, outlier 2, which is the sinker. All right, I don't think I've seen that on him before, but now he's got outlier sinker. 
that's definitely a lot better. Maybe he'll be fine. We'll see people use him and we'll find out. Tom Glavin, lefty. He's usually a tricky pitcher to hit um, if you know where to put pitches with him. I've struggled against him before, definitely. And then uh, if you see him enough times, I think you can figure him out. So he'll be in people's rotations because the stats on him look pretty good. Uh, 99 hits per nine. I wish that was a little bit higher for Tom Glavin. I'm surprised it's not. But he's got 98 walks per nine, 96 control. You should be able to dot pretty well with him. I love his pitch mix. Sinker, circle change, sweeping curve, slider, cutter. So there's nothing that goes straight. 99 break, 90 velocity. Three quirks. Not bad. Not bad. Central, we have the uh, Kerry Wood card, which I believe should be the showdown boss. I don't know yet. Uh, I haven't checked. Outlier one as usual. Um, normally, when they put a Kerry Wood card out, everyone is pretty trust trusting in this card. So they the only thing they really check is walks per nine. And looking at it here, 70 and 78 control. Pretty typical for a Kerry Wood. I think we were all hoping it would be a little bit higher. Because once he gets that, then he's in everybody's rotation for a while. All right, Kerry Wood is a very good pitcher in this game, I think. Um, 108 hits per nine, 125 clutch, and then the velo and break, five pitch mix. Pretty good. Eric Davis, he's had some really good cards. This one's like, it's just a lefty killer with really good speed. All right, he doesn't have any bunting attributes if that's how you want to play. So it's really just the speed, the fielding, and that lefty attributes, or against lefties attributes. Robin Yount, we've had Robin Yount before, 99. All right, he's always got good contact. 85 and 76 pop is really expected from him. Um, he's got 106 vision and max clutch. Great fielding at shortstop. Thought he had second base secondary, but he doesn't. He has left and center. It's pretty interesting. No right field. Willie Stargell. Uh, the Pirates have not shaken up their team affinity, you know, uh, legends in a while. We've seen Willie Stargell before, but he's still good. He's a good first baseman, and he plays um, center and right field. Sorry, he's a left fielder. I always think he's a first baseman. I think it's Dave Parker I'm thinking of. He's a right fielder too, though. You got first, secondary, center, secondary, and right field, secondary. But he's a left fielder, 121 contact, 125 power against righties, 102, 103 against lefties. Vision is a little low, but that's usual uh, for him. And then max clutch, decent fielding. Not a lot of speed. Ryan Ludwig, I really came around with this card. He's gotten some pretty good BR cards, and uh, I think he's not bad. I think he's pretty good against lefties, 102 and 97 contact. I started with the power there. I don't know why. Everything looks pretty balanced. Uh, 117 clutch, good fielding, good arm and accuracy, 74 speed, pretty pretty average card, but um, I think he plays pretty well, and he's got the quirks to back it up. NL West, this might be my favorite one because we got one of my favorite cards in the game, Eduardo Escobar. Switch hitting. Wow, I thought he had a lot more positions than this. I know last year he had a Kaiju card that had like every position except for catcher and pitcher. But this one, he's only got third base, second base, and shortstop, so no outfield for him. But he's going to be playing those positions at 80 fielding and 69 speed. The arm accuracy is like, okay or the arm strength, but, um, you know, on the Carlos Santana team boost, I think he'll be, he'll be pretty damn good. All right. Plus 12 to a lot of those hitting tri attributes and, um, two quirks pinch hitting is one of them. So you can keep on the bench if you want 93 vision, 108 clutch. All right. But he's got a great swing. So that makes up for a lot of it. CJ Crone, uh, lefty killer here, 97 contact against righties, one of five power against righties. And then almost max against left, and then 106 pop against left. 116 clutch. There he is. Gary Sheffield. I was surprised to see this be so low. Um, with the power, it's only 92 against lefties, but it's 120 against righties and 113 against righties on contact. So he's a he's a bit of a righty killer. He is a right-handed batter himself, and he does stand a little bit over the plate, so some people might not be able to get used to that. I think regardless of the way his stance is, He's always had a quick bat. Um, try him out if you haven't before because he, he plays very well. I've never had a trouble using Gary Sheffield. Hunter Renfro, this card um, it's probably the only one with max power out of all these team affinity cards. Both sides max power. 91 against righties, 106 contact against lefties, and then no quirks. Fields very well in right field, left field, and center field. Great arm, good accuracy, kind of slow, but 
good good hitting. And then Brian Wilson, their last card with a four pitch mix, um, not good enough for me. Only because of the way he delivers it, I feel like he's kind of easy to read. But he's got 125 hits per nine. Sorry, K per nine, 117 hits per nine. Max clutch, uh, 97 velo, 97 break. Really good attributes. We'll see. I think he'll be all right. Um, but eventually, I think he's easy to pick up with that. Just the two fastballs with the four seam, two seam, and then the cutter. So he's got three fastballs basically and a slider. I I feel like he's kind of easy to read sometimes. So we'll see if it does better this year. I don't know. Um, like I said, vault pack in every single division. So you get six of those for free if you play these all out. And as we all know, Team Affinity has been a little bit easier this year compared to other years. Um, if this is your first year, trust me, Team Affinity gets done a lot quicker when you play multiple game modes like BR, Battle Royale. And speaking of which, we'll go into the program. So if you go flawless, go 10 and 0, or you just finish the program just by playing enough, which everyone can do easily, you'll get Honus Wagner. Hannes Wagner, okay. I think he's the choice. We've seen Johnny Cueto before. Some people pick him up pretty well. Others struggle against him, so he's kind of 50-50 from pitching sides. Uh, Hannes Wagner, though, don't let the power fool you. He can hit home runs. He can steal bags. He can play every position pretty well. He's basically like the all-encompassing jack-of-all-trades in this game. Um, it's a cool milestone card, 500 stolen base club. First, second, third, left, center, and right. 111 contact, 116 contact, max, um, I thought he had max clutch, but he's 112, and then max bunt, if you want to play that way, 115 vision, really good card, here's Johnny Cueto anyway, pitch mix is usually the same, cutter, sinker, fastball, circle change, slider, it's a good pitch mix, and uh, yeah, good attributes, all right, ranked seasons, the new legend, I said new. He's been in the game before. Three years ago, Jake Arrieta. All right, they went with the Hyper Series for him. I thought it was going to be a milestone, like a no-hitter that they brought back from 21. It's not. But he's got 112 hits per nine. The Quirks, two of them. Um, 99 Velo. No outlier, but he's got 99 Velo. Sinker, slider, fastball, curve. Sorry, slurve. And then a circle change. Uh, he'll be a pretty penny on the market for people who do not make World Series, but then eventually you can make World Series and get him anyway. But Max Pitching Clutch, it's a good card. I think he plays well. Um, he's a shorter pitcher. You know, I don't know if that means too much in this game, but, you know, some people pick up Arietta well, I think, too. Jorge Posada, man. I, I think I'm going to go with this card first, whether I get the program done or I make World Series first, and use him. He's got... Max contact, switch hitting catcher, 80s across the board pretty much for the fielding side, including blocking. Uh, 45 speed's not great, but otherwise everything else is terrific. A um, lot, of, lot of quirks. And 93, 96 power, 101 vision, 120 clutch. That's as pretty good as you can ask for for a switch hitting catcher. And right now the only switch hitting catchers we have are Carlos Santana. So that's a pretty good one. Kiba Ruiz. Um, there's also like a BR Jorge Posada, I think, but this is the, this is the one you want to get if you want to switch in catcher, uh, until we get a 99 Adley Rutschman, which, you know, hopefully we do get at some point, everyone enjoys that card, but I'm glad we get another Jorge Posada really good drop here for this one. Um, I hope you guys can make world series and get him. Otherwise you'll have to wait till the program advances far enough for you to get him. All right. So I don't think I've missed anything. No, I did. Prince Fielder is, um, we'll go to the events real quick. I think some of you saw this on social media. Tyler Rogers, don't let the 19 velocity bother you from the 125 walks per nine and 97 control. He's a fun card to use. You can die with him. He's fun. He's a fun card. I'm really interested to see what 19 velocity looks like. So we'll see if that can fool people enough until they learn to be patient on his pitches. Matt Olson is the 99 overall 20, 20 win reward. Is it 20? Yeah, 20 wins. You get Matt Olson gold glove on the Oakland Athletics. Really cool card. I wish the contact was better. 104 and 73 does not scream 99 overall to me. I wish it was better. Even if you got to drop the contact against lefties, make it like 88. Make it somewhat usable with the pitchers that are coming out. Out, You know, make it 90 or something. 
but um 120 power 115 power 65 vision not good 90 clutch not good either i wish this card was better i don't think it's worth 20 wins um even though he's got a lot of quirks still i don't think it's worth 20 wins prince fielder is the program reward so you'll get him on the path 75 xp which everybody can do right now i think uh you can get up to 75 xp and uh another fun card 50 home run club is a cool milestone he's got all the quirks you need uh does he have pinch hitter no but he's got everything else and he's got mm, max against righties for power 100 against lefties 112 and 91 contact righty to lefty respectively so there's that um let me know what you guys think who's the best team affinity card who are you going to pick up first and who are you going to get from the ranked program if you do play ranked if you don't play ranked you just play offline let me know what your favorite team affinity division is and what card you are really excited to use so let me know what you guys think and i'll see you on the next one